<coughs> the Lord's table this morning, I'd like to uh, <coughs> combine some things from the four gospel accounts concerning Jesus' resurrection. <coughs> and uh, consider some things that were seen and said and done. <coughs> and I'd like to bid you, as the angels did to those that came to the tomb, to come and see the place where the Lord lay, or behold, the place where they laid him. <clears throat> and this is something, you know, you don't have to travel to Jerusalem to do this. You can, you can look into the sepulcher by faith anytime. <clears throat> so this is a good word from uh, the angels to come and look at this. It's a good word to hear at the Lord's table. <clears throat> if you find yourself with a heavy heart, or you find yourself sorrowing or mourning, or if you find yourself being pelted with fiery darts from the wicked one, <clears throat> then you can hear this invitation to behold the place where the Lord lay. And your heart will rejoice at the ramifications of this. <clears throat> the first thing uh, you might want to consider, now some might say, well, I don't, I don't need to look and look in the tomb. I already believe. I don't need any proof that Jesus was raised from the dead. Well, we're not looking for proof when we look inside. We're looking for edification, and there's, there's some edification to be had by looking into the empty tomb. <clears throat> the first thing to note is the great stone that was over the face of the tomb has been rolled away, and it's, it was rolled away so that you could look inside. There's no other reason for it to be rolled away. <clears throat> now we know that Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his blood, suffered without the gate, and we do go to him without the gate, bearing his reproach, bearing our own crosses, as it were. And many times here at the Lord's table, we rehearse the scenes of Jesus agonizing in the garden, or the scene at Pilate's judgment hall, or uh, the many things that happened while he hung on the cross for the sins of the world. But now we don't want to forget that the stone has been rolled away from the tomb, too. He was delivered for our offenses and was raised again, for our justification. Now if you come to the tomb to look inside, you'll find that you're in good company too. Because in all four gospel accounts, there were specific people that were named that, that actually went in to look into the sepulcher. It was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary, the mother of James, and Salome and some other Galilean women who were not named and the Apostle Peter, and the Apostle John, all these intentionally went in to look in the tomb. <clears throat> now, they didn't look out of curiosity, or they weren't looking as if they were looking at a historic landmark. <clears throat> there was something, or someone in particular, that they were looking for. They all saw the napkin that used to lie on Jesus' head. They saw the, the linen grave clothes that he used to have on, neatly folded and laid aside by the one who used to wear them. <clears throat> but that's not what they came to see. What is more important is what they did not see in the place where the Lord lay. Luke verse, uh, chapter 24, verse 3 says, And they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. Now for them at the time, it was a surprise that he was not there, and it even caused some of them to fear. <clears throat> But for them now, and for us, we look into the tomb with joyful anticipation, knowing that Christ was raised up from the dead to sit on the throne of David, and that his soul was not left in the grave, neither did his flesh see corruption. But God raised him up and exalted him to his right hand. <clears throat> so we look in there be to remind us that the fit man came back into the camp. And that by this resurrection, he was declared to be the Son of God with power. The empty tomb means that, for as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Amen. That means that, like him, we will be raised in incorruption, raised in glory, and raised in power. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. <clears throat> and it's not that just that Jesus was raised from the dead, but that he has also been exalted to the right hand of God that guarantees these things. <clears throat> and at times, <coughs> excuse me, at times you may hear him ask you, like he asked 
one of the women, Why weepest thou? <clears throat> Whom seek ye? Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Peter says, who is gone into heaven and is on the right hand of God, angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto him. And Jesus himself testifies from heaven, saying, I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. Amen. And have the keys of death, of hell and of death. I like where the Lord inserts that amen there. He doesn't say, I am he that was dead. Amen. No, I, I was dead, but I am alive forevermore. There is where he put the amen. amen. So when we look into the empty tomb, there's a lot of good things to see because we found not the body of the Lord Jesus there. Now there is a tomb because Jesus really did lay down his life and he really did die for the sins of the whole world. The, the tomb was not always empty. Jesus was there. His body was there for a time. <clears throat> <clears throat> but he's not there now. Our sin has been atoned for, and God is blessed because of it. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior, for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. This is the reason that Christ was raised from the dead and exalted. And we know this is true because he's already given us repentance and forgiveness of sins. <clears throat> the living Christ... The reigning Christ did this, and he is saving all of God's children. Without his present life and reign, we are just as lost as we were before he died for sins and before he rose from the dead. So there's a lot to consider when we look into the place where the Lord lay. <clears throat> so as we remember his death and honor the Lord at this table, he will also meet with us here as he did to his disciples after his resurrection. And he'll say, all hail. Mm -hmm. yeah. That is, be full of cheer, be well, be glad, and rejoice, all of you. And he'll say, peace be unto you at this table. Or perhaps he may say to you, what manner of communication is this, that you have one to another and you walk and are sad? Yeah. Don't be sad here. Yeah. Peace be unto you. Come and see the place where the Lord lay, and you'll find that He's still speaking these same things to you as you have need. Amen. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. And again, lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Father, we thank you for <clears throat> the memory of Christ putting away our sins. By the death of himself, we thank you that in his body he bore the sins of the whole world and made atonement, was made the propitiation. We thank you, Father, that the gospel does not end there, but you raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand where he lives evermore to intercede for us. We thank you for our great high priest. And Father, we pray that you would bless us with confidence and peace as we contemplate what Jesus has done for us and partake of the bread and the cup. <coughs> we pray these things in his name. Amen.